Okay. So VLAN principles, VLAN. VLAN is virtual LANs. So we want to look at the principles surrounding what we call virtual LANs. So a virtual local area network represents a form of administrative network that defines, it defines the logical, the logical grouping, logical grouping of hosts or end system devices that are not limited to a physical location and may be defined based on a wide range of parameters that allow for a greater flexibility in the way that logical groups are defined. So the application of VLAN technology has expanded support many aspects of the enterprise networking as a means of logical data flow management and isolation. So two things, logical data flow management and isolation. This is something as a network engineer you will do uh, in that network that you'll one day manage or run creating of virtual local area networks. So it's a concept that you should understand. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to. We can hear from you, Cynthia. Are you there? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. By the end of this chapter? completion of this section you'll be able to explain the application of VLAN tagging mm -hmm. okay I think we lost you it's like you're having an issue with your internet connection so you should be able to explain the application of VLAN tagging describe the different port link types and characteristics characteristics very important and successfully establish port-based villains. Aha. Uh -huh. So a local area network has several limitations. Has several limitations. One of them being that when the when the number of devices increase, access devices increase, then the number of broadcast packets exponentially increases when the number of broadcasts becomes more common it causes interrupts in the network due to congestion to be precise i think this is something we've said several so whenever we are using layer two devices uh, to interconnect devices on different layers uh, then the whole of this is actually a broadcast a single broadcast domain because as you can see from this particular example please mute your mic remember to mute your mic so as you can see from this example when this device sends an ARP request packet uh, that frame is gonna be broadcasted to everyone else on the network everyone else because these are switches so they're going to forward out when they receive a broadcast with all Fs on the Ethernet, they're going to forward it out to, to everyone, to everyone. And so again, if another device does a broadcast, again, you can see. So if you have so many devices, it becomes, it becomes a problem. Uh, now, one solution to this was, for example, to introduce a layer three device here, like a router, a layer three device. So when you introduce a layer three device, then now you have, you have broken it into two. So you have one broadcast domain there and another broadcast domain here. The problem is this can be a router or a switch or a layer three switch. And the problem is that they are quite expensive. Layer three equipment are quite expensive. For example, layer three Huawei switches can cost between uh, uh, half a million to about 1.5 million Kenya shillings. Uh, 
routers can cost about 2 million Kenya shillings, a single router. So they are very expensive devices. On the other hand, again, if we use, if we use a router to break up the, uh, to break up this broadcast domain, routers have a lower a processing speed, uh, not only really processing speed, but what you call um, throughput. They have a lower throughput compared to switches because routers use uh, routing tables and every packet has to be checked against the routing table before the data is forwarded. So it takes a little bit longer to forward data using routers compared to switches. So that's another problem with introducing a layer three device uh, uh, to, to handle that. So with time, they developed a solution to this, which they called the virtual local area network or VLAN technology. So really VLAN technology enables the isolation enables the logical isolation of traffic at the data link layer, irregardless of the physical location of that particular device. Uh, so what does that mean? This switch might be on ground floor. This one, first floor. This one, third floor. This one, maybe fourth floor. These are access layer switches. But you see, we can group end devices into group one, irrespective of the flow in which it is. So this device, this device, and this device here, they are on group two. On the other hand, this device here, this one, this one, and this one, they are on group one. So really, uh, these groups is what you call a villain. And when we add devices to a particular group, they can only communicate within that particular group. So that is what we call the logical isolation of users. Mm. And therefore, even when we have a broadcast, that broadcast will only be forwarded to people in that group. So that is what you're seeing in this example. That is what you're seeing in this example. This host here is generating a broadcast packet. So it will come like this to this switch. The switch will forward it out to this other switch. Then this switch will forward it to this device, but not to this device. So you're going to understand how. Because this device is not on group two. This guy here is also going to forward that packet to this network, to this switch, sorry, not network, and it's also going to be forwarded to this guy. So that way we have limited uh, the broadcast domain. We've been able to break up the single broadcast domain into two broadcast domains without the need of using a layer three device. So that is really the purpose of virtual local area networks. Now, earlier during this course, we looked at the Ethernet 2 frame header, and this is how it looks like. So it has fields like the destination MAC, the source MAC address, and the type. Type used to identify the next protocol to which we are going to pass that data to. And at the trailer, it has the frame check sequence. So this is just a a, a layer two frame. Now this frame, in regard to VLANs, is what we refer to as untagged frame. An untagged frame. Uh, meaning the frame does not have a tag. When the frame has a tag, a tag is simply we introduce, we introduce another field there called a tag. Uh, in between the source MAC address, and the type fields. So this one is called a tagged frame, a tagged frame. Now, 
the villain tag, because this tag is called the villain tag, uh, is defined using several fields. And uh, generally, uh, generally we have uh, two parts, two main parts. So the very first part is called the uh, the tag protocol, the tag protocol identifier. The tag protocol identifier is an ID, an ID that is used to represent uh, uh, the type of tag. So far, there is only one tag, which is known as the IEEE 802.1Q tag. So this is the only tag that exists so far. So what I'm talking about now is this part here, which is two bytes, TPID. And therefore, uh, almost all the time, this tag will usually have the hexadecimal value of that. Can you still hear me? Masunde, please. Okay. Then the next part is called the tag control information. Information. So the tag control information carries the information that is used to identify the format of the tag. Uh, so the TCI. So this is the TCI. The TCI has three parts. The first one is called the priority. The priority code point. Sorry, the priority code point. The second one is called, uh, let me see, the drop eligibility, eligibility uh, identifier. And the third part, is what is used to identify uh, that particular frame. So it's called the VLAN, the VLAN identifier, the VLAN ID. So priority code point, what's the purpose of the priority code point? It's used for traffic classification. Traffic, traffic classification. So, in, uh, in the network, we have different types of data that have different priorities. Yeah. So for example, we have voice, we have video, uh, and we have just normal data. So things like voice and video, which are real time, might, might want to have a higher priority, as we are going to see with voice villains. So when that particular data is voice, then the co priority code point is going to be set. It ranges from a value of zero all the way to seven, depending on the priority. Then the next one is the drop eligibility identifier. This is one, uh, one bit. It occupies actually one bit. The PCP is three bits. This is three bits. This one is one bit, so it can be a one or a zero. Now, uh, it's used to identify whether a frame can be dropped or not in case there is congestion. So in case we have congestion in the network, can this frame be dropped or not? So when it's true, it means it will have a value of one and it means we can, we can discard. Can we discard or not? Uh, can we drop that packet, that frame or not? Then the villain ID on the other hand is 12 bits, 12 bits. So it gives us a total of 1494, sorry, 1494 uh, possible villains, possible villains. Uh, now, generally, all the interfaces on a switch will belong by default to VLAN 1. So you can create all the way from VLAN 2 to VLAN 1494. So that is what the VLAN ID will store here. VLAN ID will actually store uh, 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 the, the ID, the identifier of the VLAN and it can be a value between 
this particular range that I've just told you. Okay. So let's move on. Anyone with a question? So let's look at the link types. We have uh, two link types. We have two link types. The first one is a link that interconnects switches. A link that is interconnecting switches is referred to as a trunk link, a trunk link. Then we have links that interconnect the switch and an end device, like this one here. So these links that interconnect a switch to an end device is called an access link, an access link. Uh, now, generally, uh, in, uh, in summary, as you're going to see, a trunk link can carry tagged, it can carry tagged, and it can also carry untagged, untagged frames. Uh, so that's the trunk link. So at the moment, just, just know that. On the other hand, access links, access links can only carry untagged, untagged frames. So we are going to understand how in the coming slides. Okay. So let's look at the port villain ID or the PV ID, the port villain ID. Now, uh, the PV ID the port VLAN ID represents the default VLAN for each interface. Now, in this particular example, this interface has a PVID of two. So when this has a PVID of two, it means this device is on VLAN two. This one has a port VLAN ID of three, meaning this guy is on VLAN 3. Similarly, uh, this guy here is on VLAN 2, and this guy here is on VLAN 3. Uh, so, uh, the, PV, uh, the PVID or port VLAN ID is used to represent the VLAN to which an interface belongs to. And this particular value will determine the behavior that is applied to any frame that is being received or transmitted over that particular interface. So for example here, you can see this particular interface has a PVID of one. This one here also has a PVID of one. Now by default, all interfaces on a switch you said switches come in with 12 interfaces or 24 or 48. All interfaces by default belong to VLAN 1. So all of them will have a PVID of 1 unless you configure it otherwise. Okay. So let's look at port types. Generally, we have uh, we have three port types. We have three port types that you need to understand. Uh, so the first one is called the access port. Then we have the trunk port. And lastly, we have the hybrid. So you need to understand each one of them. Which link is it associated with? then how does it process a frame? That particular port. A port is simply an interface. How does it process a frame? So let's begin with the access port. Now, uh, an access port, like this one here, is an access port. 
because it interconnects to an end device. So all the ports that interconnect end devices or hosts on your network are known as access ports. So really access ports are associated with access links. So we can see that this access port has a PVID of 10. This access port here, the next one that is interconnecting host B has a PVID of two. Then this one has a port VLAN ID of 10. So let's look at this example. Now, before we go on, you remember we said that access links carry untagged frames. Access links carry untagged frames. So I hope from this example, you're going to understand how. Now, when host A wants to send, for example, a broadcast packet in this particular network, it will send it as untagged frame. That is the frame does not have a tag. So send it to the switch. Now when this port, when this access port receives this particular frame, it's going to add a tag to that frame with a VLAN ID of 10. So that is what the access port does. Number one, it adds a tag to a frame. Now, once that frame is tagged, then the switch is going to forward it to this interface and to this interface. Now, this access port is going to look at that particular tag and see that, hey, this tag has a VLAN ID of 10, but it does not match my PVID. So if it does not match my PVID, I will discard it at that particular point. So I discard it. On the other hand, in the next example here, this particular access port will check the tag, the VLAN field of the tagged frame, then see that, hey, it matches my own PVID, therefore I'll process it. Now, in processing it, the, the access port here will actually remove the tag and therefore it will forward this particular frame as untagged frame. So it will remove the tag, then send it as an untagged frame. So that is what the access port does. Adding a tag and removing a tag. So in, in summary, you need to understand that end devices are not VLAN aware. They're, they're not really aware which VLANs they are, they, they, they are in. Yeah. Whoever knows which VLAN a device is in is actually the switch through the access ports. So that is how, that is why we say that access links only carry untagged, untagged frames. So I hope that is clear. So let's look now at the trunk. Let's look at the, 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 the trunk port. Now, remember we said that the trunk link can carry tagged, untagged or tagged. It can carry untagged or tagged frames. So in this example, you should understand how. Uh, now, generally, uh, a trunk port is associated with a trunk link. So a trunk link interconnects switches. So that is a trunk port. This is also a trunk port. Uh, so frames carried over a trunk link may be tagged or untagged. Uh, all VLANs must be permitted before being carried over a trunk. So we are going to see how. We are going to see how. Okay. So here, this is an access port with a PVID of 10. This one is an access port with a PVID of 20. Access port with a PVID of 10. And uh, not access port, sorry. Trunk port. Trunk port. Let me even use a different color. 
So this guy here is a trunk port. This one is also a trunk port. On the other hand, this one is an access port, an access port. So the trunk port has a P, PVID of 10, as you can see here, PVID of 10. This 20 here is for this access port here. So let's look at this example and see how the trunk will, will, will actually forward this data. So let's begin with host A. When host A sends a broadcast, the access port here will tag it. So it is sending untagged frame. So the access port will tag it uh, and the VLAN ID of that tag is going to be 10. Eh? So if it's forwarded here, this guy will discard it because it does not match. So this guy will discard it. Now, if it is forwarded to this particular interface, this interface has the same PVID with the tagged frame that the switch is delivering to it. Therefore, it's gonna remove the tag. So this trunk port will remove the tag of that particular frame and send it to switch B. When switch B receives that untagged frame, it's going to tag it. It's going to tag it with a VLAN ID of 10 because the PVID of that particular switch is 10, like that. Then that tagged frame with a VLAN ID of 10 is going to be forwarded to that interface and to that interface. When those interfaces receive it, this one will discard it. It does not match my PVID. Uh, this one will continue and forward it to the, to the host. Before it forwards, it removes the tag, therefore sends an untagged frame to host C. So generally here, host C and host A are on the same villain. On the other hand, host B and host D are on the same VLAN 20. Therefore, they can be able to communicate with each other. So I hope you've seen how the switch, how the trunk access, how the, uh, the trunk port is able to untag a frame. If the frame matches the PVID of the trunk port, it will untag it before forwarding. Now let's look at the other example. How does it forward? How does it forward a tagged frame? So host B here sends a broadcast. So the broadcast will be sent to this guy and also to this guy, like that. So for reasons I've already explained, this guy is going to discard it. On the other hand, the trunk port, the trunk port is going to forward this frame to switch B but this time as a tagged frame. So it's not going to remove the tag. It's going to forward it with a tag. Uh, now, when this trunk port receives a tagged frame, it simply forwards it the way it is. So that tagged frame is going to be forwarded here and it's also going to be forwarded here. So the VLAN ID is 20, does not match my PVID, I discard. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, in this other one, uh, I can see that it matches mine, therefore I forward it to the host. Before I forward, I remove the tag. So I don't know, does that make sense? Have you, have you understood how the trunk link is able to carry tagged and untagged frames? Anyone? Guys, are you there? Yes. Yeah, for me, I've understood. Okay, Meleweka. Yeah. Asante sana. Okay. So now let's look at the hybrid. Pot. The hybrid pot 
it should be noted that the hybrid port is the default port type for Huawei devices. This is the default. This is the default. Hmm. Now, uh, we have uh, two types of hybrid uh, ports. So the first one is called hybrid tagged, and the second one is hybrid untagged. Now, simply put, hybrid tagged is uh, hybrid tagged is associated with a trunk link. On the other hand, hybrid and tagged is associated with an access an access link. So what does that mean? This is this means that a hybrid and tagged is a port that interconnects end devices. Hybrid tagged is a port, a hybrid port that interconnects switches. So I hope you get that. Okay, now let's look at, uh, uh, let, let's begin with the uh, hybrid and tagged. Let's look at the hybrid and tagged. Let's look at that example. And we want to we want to see the difference of hybrid and tagged with an access port. So it receives a frame from an end system, tags it depending on the PVID of that particular hybrid and tagged port. So once the tagging has happened, uh, it, it's gonna, of course, forward it the switch is gonna if it's a broadcast it's gonna forward it there and also here for reasons we've already explained this guy is gonna discard that frame now on this particular uh on this particular a uh, a uh, hybrid a uh, tagged pot this particular a uh, port has a PVID of 10 and this frame has a VLAN ID of 10. So previously we saw the switch removing the tag before forwarding it. Now this is one of the difference between hybrid tag. We are not going to remove the tag. We are going to forward that particular tag as it is with the tag. So we forward it with a tag. So we don't remove, even though this is actually a trunk link, we don't untag. So that is how the hybrid tagged behaves when it receives a frame whose VLAN ID matches the PVID of that particular port. It forwards it as a tagged frame. It does not untag it. Uh, then after that, uh, that particular frame is going to be forwarded to this particular interfaces. This guy is going to discard it because it does not match. On the other hand, this guy is going to forward it to the end device because it matches. So the main difference is this one when it comes to hybrid tag. Now let's look at... Uh, uh, let's now look, actually what we've looked at is this. So now I want us to look at this hybrid tagged, how it behaves. Eh? So here host B and host B and host D are on the same villain. They are on the same villain. Sorry, sorry, the, uh, there's something I didn't say correctly. Uh, sorry here here sorry okay here so this frame 
is going to be forwarded here and it's also going to be forwarded here. Now, yes, yes, this particular, this particular PVID is 20 and it does not, it does not, uh, is not the same as the PVID 10 of that frame. Eh? But with hybrid and tagged ports, you can configure these ports to also accept frames from other villains from other villains so that's why you can see that here we are actually forwarding uh, this particular frame this one you see the color is a lighter blue or something so we, we are still able to forward it to host d even though it is not on villain 10. so actually that frame from host a is going to be received by both host c and host d because this is a hybrid and tagged for a, a, a port. So it can be able to process, uh, it can be able to process frames that does not match the PVID. So that's one of the main difference between a normal access port and a hybrid and tagged port. So again, here are the differences. The first one, this one. That a hybrid, a hybrid tagged port, unlike the trunk port, is able to carry tagged frames that matches the PVID of that particular port. Then the other difference is on the hybrid tagged. Its main difference with the normal access port is that it can be able to process frames from other villains. It can be able to process frames from other villains uh, when configured to do so. So we're going to see that again when we do the lab. Okay. So we have several ways in which we can assign uh, end devices to villains. So when you are configuring uh, the VLANs uh, on the switch, so in particular, we have five methods that you can use. The default one is the very first one that we are learning about. It's called the port-based, the port-based VLAN. So here, we simply add interfaces of the switch into specific VLANs. So here, on switch A, we've added port 001 and port 007 into VLAN 5. On the other hand, we have added port 002 and gigabit ethernet 009 into VLAN 10. So that is called port based VLAN assignment. Then we have what we call MAC address based. So in the switch again, we configure. We say that any device that has this MAC address is on VLAN 5. Any device that has on this MAC address is on VLAN 5. Uh, so here we are adding host A and host C to VLAN 5. Uh, host B and host D to VLAN 10 on the switch. Then we can also use the IP subnet. So if you're on this network, you're on VLAN 5. So some organizations use this. If you're on this network, then you're on VLAN 10. Uh, so you can see here, host A and host C are on the same network while host D and host B are on the same network. This is slash 24. Then we have protocol based. So for example, we can say if your IP header is coming with the IP header, then you're on VLAN 5. If you're coming with the internet protocol exchange header, then you're on VLAN 10. 
then you can use a combination. When you use a combination of any of the above methods, we call it policy-based. So we can combine any of the above. We can, we can use the subnet and the interface, or the subnet and the MAC address, or even three. So that's called policy-based. Please remember again that post-based VLAN assignment is the default assignment method for Huawei devices. So let's see how we create VLANs. We create VLANs using uh, uh, the keyword VLAN. So you have to be on system view. So on system view, you, you do VLAN, then the ID of the VLAN, so VLAN 10, like that. Remember here we are on switch A. You can also create a number of VLANs together, a group of VLANs together using the VLAN batch command. So VLAN space batch space two to three. So this will create VLAN two and VLAN three. So if you do two to four, it will create two, three, and four. Remember again, you can create from VLAN two all the way to 4094, all the way to 4094. By default, all ports on the switch are associated with VLAN 1. Uh, that's why you cannot, you cannot really create VLAN 1. Okay, so we can always verify by using the display command, display VLAN, display VLAN. So we can see that the total number of VLANs is actually four. So we've only created three. We've created 10, two, and three. But there are four because the first one has already been created for you, which is VLAN 1. So you can see uh, the VLAN IDs. You can see the type. And you can see the ports that have been added on that particular VLAN. So, so far, all the ports from G001 to the end belong to VLAN 1. The other VLANs we've created do not have any VLAN so far. I do not have any ports or interfaces so far. So we're going to see that in a short while. So how do we set the port link type? We saw that we have the trunk link type, we have the access, and we also have the hybrid, which is uh, actually the default. So here, we want to change in switch A, we want to configure this particular interface as a trunk port. We want to configure this interface as an access port. So how do we do that? We go to the individual interface, then we use the command port link type trunk. To G005, we go into that. Then again, we use the command port link type access. So we want this to be an access port. Then how do we assign ports to VLANs? We can do it in uh, one of two ways. So we are looking at the first way here. So you go into a particular VLAN. So we've gone into VLAN 2. Then we add G007. So we want to add this into VLAN 2. So when we add it into VLAN 2, its PVID will be 2. It's port VLAN ID. Then the second way in which you can do it is this way. So we go into a particular interface like G005. Then we use the command, we set it to an access port if we had not done that already. Then use the command port default, port default VLAN 3 port default VLAN 3. Therefore, the PVID of G005 is going to be 3, actually. So that's how we add ports to VLANs. So we can always confirm using the display VLAN command. So display VLAN. 
Now here we can see that on VLAN 2, we've added GE007, and we can also see that on VLAN 3, we've added the port GE005. Now, UT, UT means it is untagged, untagged port, because it's an access port. So it does not carry tags, untagged. Then D means down, uh, that interface is down. U means that interface is up. So how is data forwarded over the trunk? So we want to configure this trunk, this trunk link between switch A and switch B. So we go into this interface, G001. We use the command port link type trunk to change it from the default, which is hybrid, to trunk. Then we add it to a VLAN using the command port trunk PVID VLAN 10. So the PVID of that particular interface is going to be 10. Then we use this command here, port trunk allow pass VLAN 2 space 3. Port trunk allow pass VLAN 2, 3. So what does that mean? You remember we said that for a trunk link to carry tagged frames, you must allow them to pass. You must allow them to be carried. So this particular command will allow this particular interface to be able to forward uh, frames from VLAN 2 and frames from VLAN 3 as tagged frames, as tagged frames. Now, if you want a trunk port to be able to forward frames from all VLANs, you can use the command port trunk allow pass VLAN all. So here, instead of putting a number, you put all, A double L, port trunk allow pass VLAN all. Okay, so let's verify that. Uh, if we do display VLAN, So we've allowed VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 to pass on G001. So you see, so on G001, they are going to pass as tagged frames, TG, TG for tagged. They are going to pass as tagged frames. The status of G001 is up. So hybrid ports, uh, generally you do not really need to configure hybrid ports because by default, all the ports are hybrid. But in case you had configured it before as an access or as a trunk port, now you'll need to use this command to take it back to a hybrid port. So in a particular interface like G005, here you go and say port link type hybrid. Then you give it a PVID, port hybrid PVID VLAN 3. So it will have a PVID of 3, then port hybrid and tagged VLAN 3. Now you have to use this because this is what will allow that particular interface to untag frames from VLAN 3 and forward it to host A. So you need to understand this when it comes to hybrid. This command is used to tell that port that when you receive a frame from host A, tag it with a VLAN ID of 3. Now, this command is used to tell 
this particular interface that when you receive a frame whose villain ID is three and tag it and after untagging it, forward it to host A. So with hybrid pots, with hybrid pots, we can also configure uh, this command. Here we can say villain two, like that. So we can we can use two here. Now, if we use two, it means that even though host A is villain three, it can also receive a frame. It can also receive a frame from villain two. That port will simply untag that frame and forward it to host A. So that's the purpose of that particular command. Okay. So then we go to also this interface. Uh, we change it into hybrid port type. We add it to VLAN2. Then we, we use the port hybrid and tagged VLAN2 command to make sure that we untag it before sending it to host B. Then now we can... Uh, we can configure the hybrid tagged port, this one here between switch A and switch B. And in particular, here we must enable tagging of villain frames before forwarding. So the frames have to be tagged before we forward between the switches. So we go to this particular interface, G001, in switch A. We use the command port link type hybrid. Then port hybrid tagged VLAN 2 to 3. So it means that that particular interface will be able to carry frames uh, that are from VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 as tagged frames. So it cannot carry an untagged. Lazima equina tag. It must have a tag. The frame must have a tag. Uh, and in particular, we are only allowing frames here from villain two and villain three from that particular command that you're seeing there. Okay. So we can always validate. Excuse me, display villain. So we can see on G001, we are carrying them as, we are carrying frames as tagged frames, tagged. Then these ones, because they are hybrid and tagged, they are carrying frames as untagged frames. Okay, so I think this is the example I had explained earlier. I didn't know it was coming to appear here again. So hybrid pots, hybrid and tagged pots can be configured to receive villain traffic from multiple villains by simply removing the tag at the port interface. So here we are in switch B. We want this particular device yeah, so this device here, we want it to be able to uh, receive frames from VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. So host D will be able to receive frames from both VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. The command to do that, port hybrid and tagged VLAN 2 to 3, when you want to do it in a group. Otherwise, you can just do port hybrid and tagged VLAN 3. 
enter. Then another one, port hybrid and tagged VLAN 2, enter, like that. So even though this device is on VLAN 3 from this command, you can see we are configuring that interface to have a PVID of three. It will also be able to receive tag uh, frames from VLAN 2. So the, the interface will simply remove the tag from frames uh, that are destined to VLAN 2 and forward it to host D. So we can uh, validate by using the display VLAN command. So total number of VLANs are three. One, two, three, we've only created three. And we can see that both, uh, both on VLAN two and VLAN three, this particular interface is, is on both of them, G004 and it is supposed to carry untagged, untagged frames. So it's a hybrid untagged frame. So the other important uh, concept about VLANs uh, is the voice VLAN application. So, you must have heard of voice over IP, uh, VoIP, voice over IP. Uh, now, generally, uh, telephones in most organizations used to use what you call a circuit switched network, circuit switched network. Uh, circuit switched network, um, had its own network infrastructure uh, and its own protocols to ensure that voice signals arrive with little or no delay at all in a fast in, fast out signal. Mm. So that is what we call a circuit switched network. That is you dial and you have a dedicated line. Uh. Now, IP networks are called packet switched. Uh, packet switched networks. Packet switched networks, uh, we have what we call con contention. It is, a, it is a contentious, contentious network, meaning for you to get a channel, you have to wait until it's ready. Contentious network. Number two, uh, in packet switched networks, in packet switched networks, you are uh, packets really packets don't follow uh, don't follow the same path to the, the destination. Uh, don't follow same path to destination. And sometimes they might arrive in a disorderly manner. Disorderly manner. Remember, we said in circuit switched, it forwards, it forwards in a fast in, fast in, fast out signal order. But now here, packets don't follow the same path to the destination. And at the destination, they might require what we call resequencing. So you see, these are totally different network types. But now we want to be able to carry voice in packet switch networks. Uh, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Using voice villains. Of course, one of the, when we were looking at the VLAN tag header, one of the uh, important fields we looked at was the PCP, priority code point. And we said it's used for traffic classification. So this is some of the, this is some of the 
uh, application of that particular uh, header. The other one was the day, drop eligibility indicator. Uh, because with, with live, uh, with live voice data, if you drop some packets, it means you're doomed. The communication is not going to, to really occur between uh, the two people who are trying to have a conversation. So voice villains are used to distinguish, isolate, and prioritize voice traffic over service traffic as a means of quality assurance, as a means of quality assurance. And many, many organizations are now shifting to using IP phones, IPTV, uh, video conferencing for meetings. And these particular services need a near real-time delivery of packets. So those packets need to be given higher priority so that when there's congestion, then their queue will be different. When you do HCIP again, you're going to learn about the different types of traffic classification and management and the different types of queues that are there. Okay. So if we want to configure voice villain, we create a villain just normally. Uh, then after that, we go to an interface then we specify this particular command, voice VLAN to enable. Then the next one is voice VLAN mode auto. Voice VLAN mode auto. Now the auto command here, uh, uh -huh. the it actually is used to specify the working mode. The working mode by which the, the port was added to this villain. It can be done manually or automatically. Yeah, so when we choose auto, it means that it's going to be added to the voice villain automatically. Then after that, we can go ahead and specify the voice villain uh, MAC address and the mask. So when we do this, we know that the MAC address is usually a 48-bit uh, unique identifier, and it has the organizational unique identity. The organizational unique identity, then the unique number, that identifies that particular device. So wh when we set this, it is able to know that indeed this particular frame is from a trusted device and not from a hacker. So that when we prioritize it, we are not just prioritizing some bogus frames. We are really prioritizing frames that we trust are of importance and need that particular prioritization. So after we've done that, we can validate uh, by using the display voice VLAN status command, display voice VLAN status command. So we can see that this voice VLAN is, in, uh, is on VLAN 2 and the status is, is enabled. For how long has it been there? And we also see some of the ports that have been added to that voice VLAN. Uh, how was it added automatically? Uh, the security mode will be set as security if you specify, if you specify the, the source MAC address the way we did in the previous slide. Uh, so that each packet that enters the voice VLAN must be checked if it matches the organizational unique identifier. So for example, if you're having Huawei IP phones, you'll have a particular organizational unique identifier that you'll need to configure in your switch. So the security mode can be used to protect the voice villain against attacks 
by invalid packets. Uh, so that one is important. So that is it about valence. That is it about valence. Can someone help us in discussing these two questions, please? I'll step out for a minute. So let me just uh, have a volunteer. As you discuss, I want to step out for a minute, then I come back. Alan, you're there? Masunde. Okay, Benson. Benson. Okay, so guys, please take time. Look at these two questions. If you don't understand anything, let me know in the beginning of the next topic. Asante Nisana.